Okay, hey, I don't have a lot of time. I really gotta get going. Uh, I took a little nap before locals today. Uh, not the best idea because uh, now I'm running on crunch times here. So uh, I really gotta get out of there. I'll let you guys know what the scoop is uh, once we get schmoving. <laughs> of course it's dead. Following his last conquest, our legend continues his quest. This time, by embarking on the longest voyage to date. Day three of our local legend journey brings us to some place that I haven't actually been before ever. If you thought yesterday's drive of like about an hour was long, this one's was a tad bit longer, but oh man, it felt like an eternity. Uh, today brings us to SCG Hobby out in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. First impressions of the store though is, um, I like it. It's nice, it's uh, pretty roomy, spacious, and they've got a lot to offer here. I thought it was gonna be a little bit late, but I actually made pretty good timing. Uh, it's about 5.45, I'm doing this again when I'm trying to show you, but it's 5.45 and I believe the tournament starts around six o'clock from what I was told. Maybe it'll start a bit late, but uh, hey, Whatever, I'm here to stay anyways. I think I'm gonna ask around too. I'm not too like happy with the side deck that I've been playing for these tournaments. I definitely need to pick up some artifact Lancias and I think cosmic cyclones need to hit the side deck as well. I can take out some useless stuff like the Ash Blossom, the one of and then the two Ghost Ogre. Again, the side deck was just kind of thrown together. I didn't expect to be siding a lot anyways. Uh, and I guess it really didn't matter. Well, it did kind of matter, but uh, hey, I'm gonna try to uh, correct that this time around. Up until we get started though, I'm just gonna browse around for a bit and uh, see what's going on here. Man, let me tell you, I always wanted these Lego sets as a kid, never got them. Maybe it's for the best though, I always treated my Legos like crap thinking about it. Lancia's success, uh, I think I'm gonna just take out the Ash and the two Ogres to replace it. Definitely I think the superior hand trap. Really glad I picked these up, definitely needed them. I don't know why I wasn't playing it. Looks like we're about to get started here relatively soon, I think. Uh, I got here super early, apparently they start around 7.15 uh, as opposed to 6 as it said on the website. Not a huge deal, I'd rather be early than be late. Uh, but it looks like I asked the tournament structure and it looks like it's gonna be around four rounds of Swiss, cut to standings, no top eight like last time. So uh, hey, we'll hop into the mix, see how we do. How yep. Uh, seven. Four. Four. All right, I will go first. Okay. No, I'm gonna have a response. Good luck, sir. All right, hey, uh, things are looking up. Just at the end of round one here, we ended up taking the dub. Round one, we ended up playing against Heroes. This is a guy I actually played against before. I played against him Friday uh, when I went to top deck just to get a little bit of practice in with the deck before I decided to kick off the series. Uh, and I actually realized he was playing Warriors. I got pummeled by him before. So I wasn't gonna make the same mistakes I did last time. We end up winning the die roll and I opt to go first, of course, and we open up a pretty lovely hand, something beautiful to look at. Connector's always looking gorgeous in the hand, and I proceed to special summon the junk forward first and then normal summon the connector and activate its effect to be able to pull an aqua dolphin from the deck. Everything resolves pretty okay, and then I actually go to activate the aqua dolphin to get a peek at his hand, target the junk forward, and I get a peek at his hand. He's got two increases, a Vion, something else, and the bane of my existence, infinite and permanent. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to show off. Uh, I got these today. I didn't end up getting them in the mail. They did get lost in the mail. Uh, but I actually did end up just forking over the cash and picking them up today. Uh, this card's nuts. Uh, I definitely really, really think this is one of the best cards in the game right now. And I feel like my deck wouldn't be complete without it. This rounds out our deck to actually 60 now. I did it. Yes, you're paying rent. Thanks, bud. Yep. I appreciate it. Always. Having the knowledge that he has infinite impermanence in his hand, it really sucks for me because I really can't make any plays. I can't like commit to the Izzled because uh, I know it's not going to resolve. There's no possible way. But on the upside, at least I am able to kick something out of his hand. I do knock the increase out of his hand and I do proceed to keep going. I actually do summon the Izzled and oddly enough, he makes a misplay. He allows me to be able to add a free card off the Izzled. Even though I can't summon it, just getting the free card for the following turn is pretty big. Uh, I think he just should have 
trump the uh, infinite impermanence there. Maybe he just didn't realize he needed to hit that first effect. Uh, I don't know, kind of a big deal. Now that I have a bigger guy on the field, I go for the connector effect and I actually resummon the Aqua Dolphin and I use the Aqua Dolphin effect again, pitching another card. This time, I'm able to knock something out of his hand with 1600 or less. So that Vion, that really good card in his hand, I'm knocking that out, leaving him down to three cards. I activate the Izzled and send for cost and of course it's met by the Infinite Impermanence. I already predicted that. I actually end up getting a Mothman on the field. I think I pitch a Jackal up to be able to pull it from deck and I soup those two into IP Mascarena and I leave on the board of Mascarena Izzled, which is still kind of normal what I'm landing on anyways. I just don't have the Babel and all the Orcus cards to be able to go off with. However, my graveyard is loaded for the following turn. Passes over to his turn and he normal summons Decider and activates his effect to be able to add during the end phase from his graveyard to his hand. I'm not too scared of it. Uh, it's during the end phase. I'm not worried. Uh, I don't think he can make any plays and he actually doesn't end up doing it. He goes to battle phase and I allow it, which this was a huge misplay because I totally forgot IP Mascarena has to be used during your opponent's main phase. I figured I would just let him commit to the battle phase and then use it then, but that's just not how the card works. So I lose a Masquerade, I lose out on a whole bunch of value. Uh, it's definitely a big mistake on my part, but my hand is totally loaded going into my turn uh, after he just proceeds to pass to me. Armageddon Knight was added off the Izzle the last turn, so it's pretty much just business as usual. I proceed to like wombo combo off, clear off his board, and then put more than enough damage on board to seal up the game. Move on to game two. I'm not really sure if he's gonna opt for me to go first or second. I know Dark Law is an absolute crusher in this game, so I wouldn't be surprised if he chooses to go first. So I decided to be a little bit conservative with my siding options. I just side in three Panker Tops. I don't fully commit to like Nibiru's or anything. Uh, so I just side in Panker Tops. I forget what I ended up siding out. I think maybe just a couple little extenders. I figured getting that Panker Tops is like one of the only ways to be able to out that Dark Law consistently. So that's the best card to go for it. He does actually end up opting me to go first, which is normally expected from the hero deck. This is what I expected in the first place. That's why I wanted to be kind of conservative with it. Uh, and we open up pretty good hand again. We actually open up uh, full combo pretty much. We have a drunk forward in our hand. We summon that and we also normal summon the twist cobra, put them both into Izzled. Activate the Izzled as chain link uh, two, I believe. And the Goki is chain link one. I definitely want to be able to resolve that Goki effect over having the Izzled just add a blank to the hand. Both of them actually end up resolving and I end up adding my hand. I choose to activate the Izzled effect and I send four to some of the Dark Greffer. It's from here that my opponent actually says something that brings a lot of alarm bells to my head. Greffer? That's your fourth summon? Fourth? Uh, one, two, three, four. Correct. He asked me if that was my fourth summon. So obviously red flags everywhere. I'm expecting it to be in my opponent's hand and that thing's gonna come down and just smack me. I have Orcus already loaded in the graveyard though, which is pretty okay. So I actually end up with the board of Izzled and Dark Greffer. I end up getting another monster on board. That monster being, of course, the malicious that I ended up dumping off the Dark Greffer. Uh, at this point, I was totally expecting the Nibiru, and I'm losing the least amount of resources if he would activate it at this point, because I do have the malicious in Graveyard. I'm able to get another card off, and then I can just full Orcus combo them there. Surprisingly, though, he doesn't actually trigger the Nibiru. Uh, and then I ask him, I say, are you sure you don't want to? He confirms, and then from there, I put them all into Appaloosa. Nibiru, no more. I've been finding out a lot of people just don't assume that I play Appaloosa and they get savagely punished for it. So um, when I put them all into Appaloosa, it's pretty much just business as usual. I'm not scared of anything at all and I just go pretty much full combo. I end on a board of IP Masquerina with the Appaloosa and the Babel activated. Whole bunch of Orcus in Graveyard. Uh, I'm ready to be able to like trigger an Orcus from the Graveyard and I summon Nightmare Phoenix to potentially spin something back. I also have Monster Gates at the ready. I'm feeling pretty okay. I think if the bad news is my opponent goes, okay, draw, stand by, main, enter battle phase. Yikes. Evenly matches coming down, nothing I can do against it, but I have to be careful with what I'm picking. Uh, it's between the Babel and like the Appaloosa. The IP is just gonna go away no matter what, I think. Uh, but I, I opt to keep the Appaloosa on the board because the Babel doesn't have a target for like Nightmare. And if I summon anything off a of Harpoor, it's not doing me too much. I figure getting the monster into gates is probably more valuable and it's gonna probably seal me the game, which it actually ends up doing. He summons a solid soldier and chooses to activate the effect to try to summon. I negate it with the Appaloosa and he chains a mass change to summon Dian. Dian would be really scary on this board because he could just pound over my Appaloosa. But remember, he played evenly match and already went into the battle phase. I think he just literally ends up on a board of a set back row plus the DN. Uh, definitely not scary. I go to my turn and my hand is booming. So I just proceed to go all off, clear his entire board, attack for game. Pretty good 2-0 to start off the day. Like I said, there's four rounds of locals here. We'll see how the rest of the day ends up panning out. Keep you guys posted.
and look at this dice display. Shit's apparently very serious. Hey, so I'm about to play uh, on live stream against uh, this handsome man right here. Hi, What's Taylor. What's up, you ready buddy? to get your ass kicked, dude? No, I'm prepared no. to lose the die roll, though. You're about to get biggity fucked, bro. Oh, and man. you're about to get it live on camera there. Ooh. Grubbiest locals in Western Pennsylvania <laughs> while we stream. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back, back to the studio. I don't know. I really never use this spot to record too many things. Uh, but as you guys saw, they decided to put me on their live stream at SCG Hobby. So uh, I like to have all my resources in front of me when I recap games. So I'm just gonna very briefly go over the game that I got absolutely embarrassed by on live stream. Uh, so let's just hop into it before I get too sad. This game lasted actually less than 10 minutes. You guys will see why very shortly. I don't have hand cams in front of me, but I can kind of recount the hands that I had. Game one, we actually win the die roll and we're opting to go first. And we open up a pretty struggling hand. This is something that I had to do a lot over the course of the weekend. Uh, and that is Normal Summon Junk Forward, Special Summon Blue Mountain Butter Spy. You obviously want to be getting the warriors that give you some value. Armageddon Knight, Dark Greffer, uh, the Connector. Uh, but we didn't see those, unfortunately. But two warriors making Izzled is A-OK -okay with me. We summon the Izzled, and we're quickly met with a brutal combo of Infinite Impermanence and Phantasmay Dragon. Ugh. Izzled isn't getting either of her effects, and that Phantasmay Dragon's gonna allow him to dig a little bit deeper into his deck to look for better cards and replace shitty ones out of his hand. My hand is not looking good. I don't have any follow-up from there. I activate the Izzled to dump four from deck. It's not gonna stand on the field because of the Phantasmay Dragon. Normally, you can keep it on board to kind of contest, as they have to have specifically Harp Horror or Dark Greffer to out the 1600 Izzled. Uh, but since he has Phantasmay Dragon, it's not gonna stick around. I just activate Enemy Controller pretty much for jokes, uh, and I quickly concede that game as it passes back to him, he activates orchestrated return, discards a harp, I see the writing on the wall, that game swiftly ends. Game 2 uh, doesn't really end up going much better as I open I think one of the most unplayable hands I've ever seen. In a combo based deck, this hand starts off by me T-setting and passing. That's literally all I could do. It was that bad. Passes over to him. He opens up a reinforcement of the army, which allows him to get to Dark Greffer, and Dark Greffer hits the board, pitches for cost, but I have an infinite impermanence, which is able to actually kind of shut him down for the turn. Pretty all right. Uh, and he attacks over the harp horror that I had to set. He sets one back row, passes it back to us. We draw we don't really improve. The glare makes it a little bit difficult to see, but I activate the hard port in my graveyard to special summon a nightmare from deck, and I'm forced to tribute over that nightmare to summon malicious from my hand. From there, I'm actually able to stick a Galatea on the board, but that Galatea gets met with an impermanence of his own, which is unfortunate, and I'm still able to cobble together a board consisting of IP Mascarena by getting a Gizmek that I drew out of my hand. I did hard draw the Babel, which normally would suck, but since he impermed the Galatea, I guess it's A-OK. -okay. I end on a board of um, orchestrated Babel, Galatea, and IP Mascarena. We pass it back to him, and it looks like he was clearly ready to go second, because the first thing he does is he uses his priority to main phase tribute over my IP Mascarena, so I can't use the effect, and then he follows that up quickly with a mind control on my Galatea. Uh... Okay, that's disgusting. From there, he just goes way off. I'm only sticking this Gamma Seal on the board. I literally have zero follow-up. The writing is on the wall. I have to concede. It's very hard to describe how bad this opening hand was that I opened. So, uh, I'm just gonna show you guys. Yeah, activate Nightmare Effect. Get the Orcus Bro, combo. what even you was this opening hand? Not good. Just absolutely polarized good. me. Good game, sir. Thank you. Uh, nobody, nobody watched the VOD for this stream. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's an absolute <laughs> embarrassment. That was, that was uh, I, I, I kind of don't even want to talk about it, but, uh, it happened. So, uh, yeah, good game, Taylor, good game. You too, buddy. <laughs> We got lucky with the Pappy last time. I can't be asking for too much. As you can see here, things are starting to close up. Everything is getting a little dark. It's a little bit past 9.30, I believe. Oh my God, it's 10, 12. Uh, I've completely lost track of time. We wrapped out our four rounds of locals today, and uh, 
Uh, tough crowd. We ended up going 1-3, uh, the worst local run I've ever had. Uh, it could be due to a slew of bad hands. It could just be due to people being better than me. Hey, I'm not going to argue with the results, uh, but I did have a blast getting out here today. Again, just exploring new locals in the area is pretty cool, and uh, I, I just really enjoy it. I like this whole series idea that I came up with. I'm, I'm definitely having a blast just traveling western Pennsylvania, attempted becoming a local legend. But yeah, the uh, local legend part, I don't know, maybe we have to reword that. Maybe we'll stick with like local warrior or something like that. Irregardless if I'm having fun, I consider it a good day. So a uh, trip out here to SCG Hobby, consider it a success even though we just got absolutely pummeled. Yeesh. I'll be sure to link their Twitch stream down in the description below. They have their locals on Mondays and I believe they started streaming them just like two weeks ago or something like that. So if you want a, a little weekly kind of Yu-Gi-Oh thing to check out, that's something for you guys there. Again, link will be down in the description below. Uh, be sure to check them out. Hopefully tomorrow looks a little bit better, but I guess we'll just find out when we get there. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one.